Hello, my name is Yoga Priya Lokesh, and my 2010 project is over human trafficking. And in this presentation, I will take you through the horrors of human trafficking. Whenever we think of slavery, we often think about African Americans working in the cotton fields and, the, and being abused by white Southern men. Or, if you're a history buff, you might even remember the Native Americans being enslaved by the Spanish under the encomienda system. But you don't think about this little boy you uh, used as a form of forced labor in the country of Peru. This boy is three years old and his name is Victor Garcia and he is one of the millions of children that are affected by human trafficking. Now the difference between past slavery and modern slavery which is also known as human trafficking is that it's gotten much worse. It hasn't gotten any better. Over time now it's not just Native Americans or even African Americans that are being targeted. It's people from every country, India, Australia, Canada, Mexico, gosh, I'm nervous, that's okay. And currently, it's now, now it's everyone, all ages, uh, both male and female. And also, the number has grew in size. From 11.3 million from the 1492 to 1865 period, uh, to now, there is now over 46 million victims in human trafficking, which is the largest amount we've ever had. So what the victims go through. These victims are subjected to physical abuse, mental abuse, all sorts of torture, and they're often forced to live in um, condition in places with horrible conditions, and they oftentimes they're starved and they're beaten to do whatever the pimps want, or whatever the sellers want. Sex traffic. What? Did I skip something? Oops. Okay. Sex trafficking. This is one of the cruelest things that a person can go through. Oftentimes, these young women and children, it could be boy or girl, some are, some, some are as young as seven years old, and they are subjected to having sex with as many men as the pimps tell them. And what happens when a girl or boy, a young woman or girl refuses, is that they beat them. They beat them to the point where these girls eventually give in and have sex for a profit. And there is one of the, what, what, and there's so many, and they also go through mental abuse, and, and they're starved, as I said before. But there is one way for these girls to get out of human trafficking, or the sex trafficking industry, and it's a really horrible thing. What happens is, if they give birth, uh, after having sex with many men, and is what the pimps say is, you can go, but you have to, you have to keep your child here to pay off your debt. So that's another way that they manipulate the girls into staying in this industry where they don't want to be. Labor trafficking. Labor, tra labor trafficking is probably one of the lar makes up the largest portion of human trafficking. With, uh, uh, with over 20 million people in labor trafficking. 50% of the world's products are actually made from la forced labor victims. Uh, all the things that you would see in normal life, uh, clo clothes, furniture, toys, technology, all the things that we use every day. There are three types of human trafficking. There is forced labor, which makes up 67 to 70 percent, and then there is sexual exploitation, which makes up 20 to 22 percent. And then there is domestic servitude, which is kind of another form of forced labor, but it's completely different. In, in a way that the, their living conditions are maybe a little bit better. And that's 10 to 11%. And one of my projects, and what my project was for this 20 time project was a blog. It's called The Horrors of Human Trafficking. I left the link up. And the reason I created this blog was to kind of open people, people's eyes to the severity of this problem and all that's happening in our world because we don't really see it. We don't see the abuse they go through or the mental, or the mental abuse they go through. We don't see any of, it, any of it, or we don't notice the stats of what's really happening or how we get our clothes or food or shoes or food. So that's the reason I created this blog. And in this blog, I wrote a novel called Forced. 
and it's about this young girl who gets and who gets trapped into human trafficking and what she does is she goes through this journey of each of each branch of human trafficking in each subsection so she goes through um, sex trafficking to the fields of Africa where she works uh, with other children and I also wrote this to make to give people an idea of how these victims really feel in the situation, how they exactly might feel feel in uh, in their living condition, or when they're sitting down, just being forced to work, and when they don't want to. How we can help? We can help by starting shelters for freed victims that have nowhere to go, and we. But whenever we do this, we have to organize and take precautions whenever it comes to taking some of the victims out of human trafficking. Because it's a very complex system, and most people don't know that, that the trafficking industry is very, very complex, and they have all sorts of ways to manipulate the girls into staying, or... We must also try to help the victims get back on their feet, because most of them were enslaved at very young ages, and they came from poor countries where there was little education. So we could also teach them the basic reading writing skills that we have, but they don't. That would really help them out. And we should volunteer our time to help taking care of them and spending time with them until they get back on their feet. <laughs> In this presentation, I would like to thank, my, thank Matt Friedman, who has given me all the info I needed and more. And he kind of showed me just how serious it was. He was, uh, he was kind enough to take his time out of, human of fighting human trafficking for me. And I interviewed him for about 40 minutes and I learned so much in that 40 minutes. He told me about the supply chains of, of businesses and he told me exactly how the girls in how the girls of sexual exploitation feel and how he's met so many people in this journey that he's gone, gone through. And he's a very amazing person and he's a great human tra trafficking activist. He's been fighting human trafficking for 25 years since he found out the, the number of girls with STD has raised uh, in Nepal and India. And he was wondering why, because he was a social health worker at the time. So then he kind of found out what was happening. So I would like to thank him and I would like to thank Mr. Fontenot who has given me this opportunity to learn so much about human trafficking and who, who, well, who ultimately helped me find this crime that I would like to fight or to help end. And that is all. Is your interview available? Like, did you record it? I actually it? do have seven minutes on my interview. Okay. Well, we might need to see that. Okay.